But then, nothing. Muhammad's first blinding revelation was followed by a long silence that threw him into complete crisis. Had he been deluded after all? Was the revelation just meaningless hysteria? Had Muhammad the seeker been abandoned by God? He was absolutely in despair. I mean, one of the sources says he was so despairing, he almost flung himself off the top of the mountain. Days of silence became weeks, then months. All the while, Muhammad lived in turmoil, doubting what he had experienced, doubting himself. Then one morning, after several months, the long silence ended and the revelations began again. Muhammad now began to understand that he had a special responsibility. He had a message. Like the other prophets before him, he believed God had given him a vision. His duty was to share this message to pass it on to the people around him, to help them change their lives for the better. Muhammad's revelations would become the sacred text of Islam and what is now known as the Quran, literally the recitation. The orthodox Muslim position is that it is God himself who is the author of the Quran and Muhammad was just the person to whom it was first revealed. The Quran is considered by most Muslims to be God's miracle. Throughout Muhammad's life, he steadfastly denied he had any miraculous powers. He insisted no extraordinary signs and wonders were associated with him except for the words. He was just a man. The Quran, the message, was the only miracle that mattered. The spiritual power of the message is in the words themselves. <laughs> Almost all Muslims believe that Muhammad was unable to read or write. His illiteracy has become essential to their faith. It is important because some critics of Islam have often claimed that Muhammad, in his travels, must have read Christian and Jewish scriptures, and so borrowed religious ideas from them, which he then rehashed as his own message. But if he could not read or write, then he was, the Muslim argument goes, pure and free of any such influences and the revelations that form the basis of the new religion of Islam came direct from God. It is very important for Muslims to believe that the Quran is the unmediated word of God, that Muhammad did not obtain it from Christian or Jewish or Samaritans. That is why despite the Quran actually saying the opposite, tradition says that he was illiterate. That is also why he is put in the middle of a desert, because in the middle of a desert he is hundreds and hundreds of miles away from the melting pot of the Near East, the place where all these extraordinary religious traditions are bubbling and welling up. To present the argument that the Quran is influenced by Judaism and Christianity is quite absurd. I mean, clearly Islam is, sees itself as a continuation of the monotheistic tradition. We are a continuation of Judaism and Christianity, so of course we are influenced by these religions. The Qur'an clearly says that the Prophet Muhammad could not write with his right hand. It's, it's very clearly mentioned in the Qur'an. And although the term Ummi doesn't mean illiterate, it means not versed, it means not learned, it means a person who has not studied and learnt scripture. But it has the implication of also being, uh, of being someone who is illiterate. But the point also 
is that when the angel Gabriel comes to the Prophet Muhammad in the cave and tells him read, the Prophet says, I can't read.